All right, good afternoon, everyone. Um, let's go ahead and get started. Our webinar is on the importance of measuring pressure in commercial buildings. Uh, some of the topics that we'll cover. What is air pressure and how does it affect a commercial building? What methods are used to control building pressure? How to measure the building pressure? Installation and set points for, for building pressure sensors. So to, to get started, uh, what is pressure? Air pressure is the force exerted onto a surface by the weight of the air. Uh, in cool air, the air will be denser, heavier, uh, warm air, it's lighter, uh, less pressure. Some of the causes of uh, internal and external pressure. Uh, weather is a big factor. Uh, when weather outside is colder than the air inside, the air outside is more dense, therefore the pressure is greater. When it is warmer, it is less dense and uh, less pressure. Uh, so in, in the wintertime, you have uh, cold, dense air uh, at ground level, so your lower uh, floors will face a higher external pressure. Uh, in the summertime, the opposite happens. You'll have a, a less pressure uh, on the external building and higher pressure internally. Uh, wind is another factor. Uh, wind on the windward side of a building increases the pressure. On the leeward side, it decreases the pressure. Uh, and the, in the summer, wind drives moisture-laden air into the windward side of the building. In the winter, uh, air exiting the building pulls out, out the comfort and cooling, or the comfort and heating internal to the building. Uh, mechanical, um, exhaust fans and restrooms, uh, economizers, relief dampers, all of those affect building pressure. Uh, mechanical systems are needed in order to maintain or regulate your building pressure. Uh, excess intakes cause positive pressure and excess relief can cause negative pressure effects. Some of the effects of not managing uh, building pressure. Air stratification, uh, as you can see in the little graphic there, uh, you can have different floors with different pressures, different temperatures. Uh, generally, warm air rises. Uh, it'll follow shafts, stairwells, uh, that kind of thing, you know, buildings. High indoor humidity uh, in the summertime. If you're not keeping out the heat and humidity, uh, you have a negative pressure in the building that can draw the uh, humidity and heat indoors. Uh, drafts. Uh, anytime you have a taller building with the, uh, you know, depending on the tightness of the building, air Negative air in stairwells, negative air in elevators will draw air in, uh, causing drafts throughout the building. Hot and cold spots, uh, they can be found uh, everywhere inside of a building in compartmentalized spaces that are not properly managed. Uh, on lower floors and, and higher floors, you'll have hot spots. Higher energy use, uh, the high energy, energy use is from bringing outside air in, uh, trying to condition that air, or you know, expelling the conditioned air that you have inside the building. Uh, how hard to close or open doors. Negative pressure on our opening doors can make them hard to open. Um, positive pressure can blow those doors open uh, and with it, you know, push out your conditioned air. So monitoring, measuring, and uh, managing air pressure is important to help maintain comfort and energy by some of the ways that you, or some of the methods that are used to manage pressure, exhaust and return fans. Uh, return fans, economizer also consists of an additional fan mounted in the AHU or RTU. Uh, the key difference between that and a return fan is that the uh, return fan runs all the time. Uh, some of the pros and cons. Uh, pros, low differential pressure for across the supply fan because you've got the added return fan uh, boosting the pressure. 
uh, lower installation costs because, you know, again, uh, you don't have to add a, a, as large a fan as normal or, or as with the relief fan. Uh, the cons, higher operating costs because your fan's running consistent, consistently or constantly. Uh, complex control schemes uh, because you have to have two uh, differential pressure transducers. You have to have one that's in the system and one for the building. Uh, it's difficult to measure because of the turbulence and some of the uh, ducted returns uh, and limited layout flexibility. Uh, exhaust fans. Uh, an exhaust fan's economizer consists of additional fan mount in the A2 or rooftop economizer section. The fan discharges air to the exhaust duct in the case of a rooftop unit directly outdoors. Uh, but by monitoring the space pressure, you can cycle the fan on and off. Uh, you can modulate that fan. Uh, so by modulating it and only using that relief fan when you need to, you can lower the operating cost. Uh, there's greater layoff flexibility and simpler control because you can just use one pressure transducer for the building. Uh, it sometimes will cause negative pressure at low loads. Uh, you have to have a, a larger supply fan to make up for uh, the differential pressure that can be caused when the relief fan's not in use. So that can increase your cost a little bit and then possible leakage at the uh, relief fan air damper. Uh, you know, when the fan's off, you, you can get a little infiltration there, so. So that brings us to, you know, we show, I've shown you ways to manage it, some of the effects of it, but now it's time to measure it. You can't manage the building without measuring the pressure. Um, the limo has three, or has a differential pressure transmitter that comes in three uh, ranges. Uh, we have a zero to one inch that has eight field selectable ranges everything from 0 to 1 to negative 0.6 to positive 0.6. Uh, the 0 to 10 uh, version has everything from 0 to 10 inches to negative 0.4 to 0.4 uh, as field selectable ranges. Uh, and then the 0 to 28 has from 0 to 28 inches uh, from to uh, 0 to 4 inches of water. Some of the universal features for the 22 ADP series, uh, they all come in NEMA 4 enclosures. And what that helps with is you don't have to worry about where you're going to install the sensor or which sensor you buy. Uh, all of them are NEMA 4 rated, 4X rated uh, with IP65 included. Our conduit fittings and cable fittings, so everything that you need to install the sensor is included, including the pickup tubes, uh, well, sanding static pe pressure pickup tubes, uh, poly tubing, uh, the conduit and cable fittings, everything that you need is there in the package. Uh, they come with spring-loaded terminal blocks. The terminal blocks are there uh, to help you aid in commissioning. Uh, it's easy to slide the wires underneath the terminals and, and pull them back off. Um, and therefore, when commissioning, there's nothing to unscrew, uh, no tools needed. Uh, as we just, as I just showed you on the former slides, there's eight field selectable ranges for each of the models. Uh, so, you know, one sensor does more. Uh, each unit is capable of manual calibration, uh, have a velocity output. They're all UL rated uh, 2043 and UL50. Uh, we have an optional LCD and then an optional true auto configure, auto zero calibration that I'll cover a little bit later. And then we have optional Modbus communications. So all of our differential pressure sensors use a PZO resistive uh, pressure sensor with a Wheatstone bridge. The, this is a really good sensor. It's long-term long stability. It's better than a strain gauge because it detects smaller ranges of pressure. Uh, conductivity in the semiconductor is influenced by a change uh, that can be produced by extremely small mechanical deformation. Uh, the sensitivity is higher than most other types of sensors. It has uh, good linearity and at constant temperature and ability to track changes without signal hysteresis. Our uh, zero to uh, one inch, uh, it's really important to, when you're measuring building pressure because you're dealing with such low pressures uh, to have a high accuracy. Our zero to one inch, uh, 22 ADP, has accuracy of 0.004 inches of water. Uh, generally a set point range 
for building pressure is plus or minus or uh, 0.05 inches of water. The uh, differential pressure range must be a little bit larger than that. So what, what that means is if you have a set point of, let's say that your building pressure is going to be set for 0 0.05 inches, you need to have a range that's a little larger than that to accommodate uh, wind, um, stack effects, you know, just different pressures that you aren't considering uh, because, you know, you'll have spikes over the life of the sensor. All transmitters need to be calibrated. Calibrated. Uh, all of our 2280P series have the option for manual calibration. Uh, that's a, a zero point calibration for differential pressure transmitters. And what I mean by zero point uh, calibration is that the low and high side have to be equalized uh, in order for the sensor to uh, have a, the zero drift set. And what the, the drift is, is a not true zero reading. So let's say that your sensor is just sitting there and neutral pressure it should be reading zero, but if it's reading a little bit higher, a little bit low, that needs to be taken out. Uh, that's the drift of the sensor. So when you disconnect the two tubes um, from the pressure transducer, hit the manual calibration button, it stores that into memory, whatever it's reading into memory, and uses that as offset for future uh, readings, and thus eliminating your drift. Uh, one option that's really nice with our sensor is we offer a true auto calibration feature. And uh, what true auto calibration means for us is that you don't have to be at the job site in order to calibrate our sensors. You don't have to push that little button. And the way we uh, accomplish that is we have electrical mechanical valve on PCB, a little solenoid that equalizes those pressure tubes on the uh, uh, pressure transducer or the uh, little IC that we use. Uh, and if there's a value that's measured, the microprocessor automatically sets that as the zero point offset and uses that in the future to re reduce drift or remove the drift. Therefore, our sensor is maintenance-free when you order it with the true auto calibration. Uh, as we all know that most times sensor, these differential pressure sensors only get calibrated when they're first installed. So this is a really good feature for especially low pressure differential pressure transmitters. All right, let's talk about uh, sensor installation and set points. Uh, the high pressure ports for your sensor, differential pressure sensors should be installed inside the building. Uh, the low pressure ports are always outdoors. Uh, some of the places not to install the indoor sensor is in a lobby or a place that's going to have frequent door openings. Uh, the, the sudden gust of wind uh, coming through a door can make the sensor act a little erratic, especially if your control signal is uh, rapid. Generally, you want to install the sensor uh, on the lowest floor. Uh, when installing the outdoor pickup ports, uh, choose probes that will keep out dust, insects, and debris, uh, and avoid installing where wind can alter the pickup. You don't want to put it on a windward side of a building uh, if you can help it, or where wind will affect that sensor dramatically. Uh, that will increase your pressure uh, quite a bit and throw off your readings. Avoid installing probes uh, where they can collect moisture and freeze. Uh, that, that happens more often than not because, you know, you've got your tubing that's running inside the building. Uh, it has a little heat to it, and it can condense inside some of the metal uh, pickup ports. And uh, when that moisture builds up and freezes, it blocks the port, and you don't get a good reading, or you don't get a reading at all. Uh, another thing to keep in mind, you want to avoid long-distance runs with the poly tubing. Uh, generally, a quarter you can run a quarter inch up to 100 feet. Uh, you can run 3 eighths up to 250 feet, but runs longer than 250 feet, you should really consider moving your pressure sensor. A good overall sensor set point is uh, 0 0.05 inches of water. Um, it's a good starting point, I would say. Buildings usually uh, controlled by monitor pressure on the first floor. Uh, it's slightly negative pressure in the winter or or in colder climates, you may want to set that pressure a little bit lower than that uh, because it's not a bad thing to draw in cold air because what that will do is help dry out your building a little bit. Uh, in hot, humid regions, slightly more pressure may be ne necessary. Uh, you may even have to go up to 0.1 inches of water uh, just to keep out the heat and humidity. Uh, 
ultimately what's going to decide what set point that you use is the building um, construction, whether how tight it is or how leaky it is. Uh, the, the idea is to keep the hot out and humid, humidity out, uh, bring in a little cool air to keep your building nice and dry. And the, the main point is you don't want to alter the effect of your doors. Uh, you don't want them to blow open. You don't want them to be hard to open. So. When you when installing the sensors uh, or controlling multiple BABHUs with a single space sensor, uh, make sure that or when you when you have multiple AHUs controlling a single space, like in a gymnasium or uh, open floor plans, you want to make sure that you're using the same pressure sensor for all of your AHUs uh, for all of their pressure schemes. And the reason for that, if uh, they start, if you have different sensors for different AHUs controlling the same space. They'll fight each other, and you could get a wind tunnel effect. All right. Uh, I do appreciate your time today. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask, and I'll help you if I can. All right. Thank you so much, Clayton. Um, in just a few moments, we, we do have some questions. So in just a few moments, we will, um, I will ask those questions, and Clayton will answer them as best as possible. So if you do have any questions, what you need to do is open up that question box, type in your question, and I will read them aloud, and Clayton will assist you. Once again, if you joined us partway through the webinar, um, this webinar is being recorded and will be posted to a Belimo website at a later time. And also, we do have a handout for today, and that is um, the sensors brochure, so you can download that handout before you leave today. So I'd like to get started with the question and answers. Clayton, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, here we go. Um, first question, is neutral building pressure a realistic goal? Um, you're, you're always going to want, want it slightly above or slightly below. Neutral, uh, neutral pressure, pressure would be very hard to control, uh, but there, there's reasons to have it slightly more positive than it is neutral. Um, for instance, in, in the summer, you want to keep out the temperature and humidity. Uh, neutral would allow some of that to infiltrate and, you know, you're, you're conditioning outside air at that point, so. Next question. Can you connect multiple, sorry, got any questions coming through. Um, can you connect multiple faces of building into a common connection to a sensor to equalize signal from wind effect? Yes, um, but you have to be careful with the length of the tubing. Uh, Did you hear me? Yes, I did. I didn't know if there was okay. a follow-up. Okay, next question. Um, what are some examples of a good location uh, for locating an indoor pressure sensor? Uh, in, in a high traffic area that's, that is not exposed to the exterior walls, uh, away from doors. Uh, common areas like, uh, let's say that you had a first floor cafeteria, that would be a good place for a, a good for the pressure sensor. Um, you want to keep it away from uh, any place that's going to have erratic uh, pressures, any place that could cause it to spike. Um, can we control building pressure for different AHUs in the buildings in each of the exit air of AHU? i say that one more time. Sure. Can we control building pressure for different AHUs in the building in each of the exit air of that AHU? And the relief and the exhaust of that, um, you can, but it's, it's preferred to have it compartmentalized, and depending on if you're using relief or return fan, it's, it, the control scheme would be different. Can you connect the output of a space pressure sensor directly to the input of a modulating actuator on a pressure relief damper? Could you repeat that for me one more time, please? Of course. Can you connect the output of a space pressure sensor directly to the input of a modulating actuator on a pressure relief damper? It wouldn't be advisable. I mean, you could connect it. You could connect anything to a, an input. 
but you're you would be missing the set point and the um, actual um, control loop variable. So, okay. Um, you said that the sensor recalibrates itself and notes the drift. How frequent does this recalibrate? Every ten minutes. Okay, and I don't know if this is the same question, it's asked differently, but how often is the equipment measured in the building? How often is the equipment, it's continuously measured. Okay. Um, in colder climates, winter especially, what negative set points do you recommend? And on spring, fall days, or season changes, how have you switched positive to negative? Uh, Generally, if you're going to do a positive to negative, you'd do a, uh, some sort of reset uh, loop. But uh, let's say in the, the winter, I wouldn't go below, a, a, you know, zero is a good pressure uh, for winter, but I would never go below a negative 0.1. Uh, it, that would be a really cold climate. Uh, and then what was the rest of that question, Michaela? I'm sorry. Sure. And on spring or fall days or season changes, how have you switched positive to negative? That would be the, the reset loop. That, that's in your controller. Um, you could do that based upon temperature. Okay. Um, does this application, I guess this product, work better um, on higher buildings? Uh, it's the same. It, you know, the building type is there's different types of pressure measurement for different types of buildings. So a single story, you could probably get away with using one pressure transducer, uh, you know, and do really good with the building pressure. A taller building, you may use, especially if your building's compartmentalized, you're going to use want to use one sensor per compartment. Um, and that, you know, it, it kind of depends on how leaky or how tight your building is too, so. Okay. Um, can the 2280P display in Pascal? Yes. Okay. Um, what is the warranty for this product? Five years. Five years. Um, can you expand on the volume flow, please? On volume flow? I'm not, I don't understand the question. Okay. Mr. Ed Smith, can you please expand that question for me? Um, for residential buildings, do you recommend positive or negative pressures? Generally, uh, good for residential buildings want to be 0.05. Um, That's positive. Okay. Um, okay. How would this work if the current issue in a building is failed on doors and elevator shafts? I'm sorry? Well, How would this work if the current issue in a building is failed on doors and elevator shafts? Is failed on doors and elevator shafts? I, I don't understand the question. Okay. I'll get clarification. Um, how is the flow calculated? That was the follow-up to the flow volume flow. Uh, in the velocity, we don't. We're, we're not calculating CFM. We're calculating velocity. Uh, so it's a standard velocity calculation. If you wanted to convert that to volume flow, then you would multiply that times the area of the duct. So. Okay. Um, why do you want negative pressure in winter? Won't you need more heating? Uh, well, you're trying to keep the heat in. Uh, so a slightly negative pressure in the winter time uh, helps you to dry out your building a bit on the peripheral. So. Okay. Um, and we have a follow-up question. It's a follow-up information to the question about the elevator doors. Um, okay. Doors do not br do not breezeways do not have breezeways, and we have a bad stack effect. Also, the elevator shaft seems to me another issue for pressure coming up throughout the building. So that's. Yes. Well, that's that's. That's probably a more in-depth question. You know, I'd be glad to answer you via email or we can talk over the phone or something like that. 
Perfect. So, Bill, I will get you Clayton's information, and then you can follow up, or we will follow up with you in regards to your questions. Um, do you recommend any maximum elevation difference between the inside and outside sensing points? Maximum elevation. Uh, on your tall, taller buildings, uh, because of the stack effect, you're going to have the higher elevations in the wintertime are going to be uh, lower pressure. So, yeah, I, you know, if, if it depends on how, how, how tall your building is as far as how much, uh, how far apart you want your sensors. And, you know, and again, it depends on if they're compartmentalized or not. So. Okay, um, next question is, can you explain more where your 100 on 1 fourth inch poly and 3 eighths poly sensing tube rule comes from? It's the amount of effect or how, how much air. So let's say that you're measuring a low pressure. The shorter or the longer runs of poly, it takes longer for the sensor to pick up. Uh, and so therefore you want more area or more volume coming in from that, the static pressure ports or the ports in general. So that's why you want longer runs or, or lar larger diameter tubing. Okay, I'm going to do a last call for questions or comments. Um, if after the conclusion of this, uh, this webinar, sorry, I got a little tongue-tied, um, we will um, reach out to you, or you can reach out to us, and we will answer those questions or attend to those comments. Um, as stated earlier, this webinar is being recorded and will be posted to our Belimo.us um, site as well as our YouTube site. And if you've registered for this webinar, um, you will get a uh, recording tomorrow. Um, the complete webinar. So it doesn't look like we have any further questions. Once again, thank you so much, Clayton, for that excellent presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone who attended today's webinar. Um, we do have a handout if you'd like to download the sensor brochure. Um, and if you have any follow-up questions, feel free to reach out to myself, and I will get them to Clayton. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you so much. Bye.